So in the last session, we have seen how to enable the offerings and options. By including offerings and options, we created implementation project. And during the implementation project, we just added offerings and options to the same project based on the scope of the implementation. It means what exactly we are going to implement for the client. Accordingly, you have to select required offerings and options. System generated task list that we have reviewed. And we can assign offerings and options to team members and they can update the status against the project or offering or option. When you update the status against the project, you will be able to track the progress of the project, where you can track the progress of the project. So go to our implementation project. So we created user as a MX. log into the instance as a MX user. The project what we created, that project is already assigned to a MX user. Click on username, click on setup and maintenance. And click on task list, click on manage implementation projects. Now just click on overview so that system will display which projects are already assigned to Amex user. Just click on overview. Wait for a moment, yeah. Now you can see to the Amex user, only one project is assigned that is Amex implementation project. So here is the status or progress of the project. In the last session, we updated statuses, different statuses. And we have set due dates for certain assignments for the team members. Those all are reflecting here. You can see completed tasks are 116. In overall, 6% setups are completed. Yes, we didn't complete for reality to understand how the status would reflect. I think for payables application, we have set the status as a completed. The same is reflecting here. Here you can see 901 tasks status is in progress. So whatever the status you updated as in progress, that is reflecting here, and that is 43% in overall tasks. And 52% tasks within the project status is not started. We didn't update any status. We left as it is what system is taking. Also here you can see the due dates. So this week, you have to complete 71 tasks and you not yet started those tasks. You can see in the pop-up. In the next week, we have to complete 1017 tasks. Those task status also not started. And there are many tasks where there is no status updated and due date is updated. So for 901 tasks, there is no due date updated. That is the reason you could see due date as a none. And out of these 901 tasks, you can see <clears throat> few are already completed, few are in progress. So 116, due, there is no due date, but completed 901 tasks, no due date. Those are in progress. So this is how you can check. If you want to know which tasks are completed, you can click on that section. You can click here or here. Anywhere you can click, it will take you to the list of tasks. I'm clicking on 
is 116. So it will show you those tasks. These are the tasks are updated as a completed. Reality we didn't complete just to understand how the status can be reported. We just set as a completed. Now again, go back to assignment status. And here you can see the same status. So this is how we can update the status that you can find at the project level as a progress of the project. Go to next tab, assignment status by task list. Here you can see with more detail level, however you are finding the folders, once you open the project inside of the project, what are the different folders you find application wise, the same here you can see. Define invoicing and the payment configuration means payables. Define expense configuration, expense application, fixed assets, receivables. Okay. And different application. Application wise, you can see, or else, what are the different different folders we have within the project? Once we create the project, so within the financials, what are the different folders we have? The folder wise, you can see the status. And select resource status. Which resource are working for this project that you can see here? Four resources are working for this project. So XYZ EMP. For this employee or consultant, we assigned 1017 tasks. The due date is next week. For Amex, 901. And for ERP tree, 46. And other user, ABC, LTD. 25 tasks, those need to be completed this week itself. So this is how you can see here, you can filter and you can check. This week, ERP3 and ABC LTD has to complete the, these setups. Next, Hi, you can Lakshman. check. Lakshman, today only I joined. So I want to know which version it is actually. Um, uh... We have completed three to four classes. No, no, no. I'm not asking about that. What I, I got videos that one uh, link for demo. I'm talking about which version it, this feature is included. Earlier it was not there in the 20. I remember that one. Feature. No, no, it was there. It was there. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. thank you. It was there from the older releases also. Yep. Fine. <clears throat> so next week, next week there is an assignment only for. XYZ EMP. XYZ EMP. You can see how many tasks are assigned and status is not stopped. So, this is how you can look at the project and you can get very high level understanding. That is a purpose. You can assign a resource to offering or option or project level and you can keep updating the status based on the activities what we are doing against the project here activities in the sense only one activity doing setups so this is what you have to understand about implementation project now let's go back to our implementation project what we created and open this project now within this project you can expand financials and you can see all these options and fewer sub options also please go on mute please so these are the different sub options within the offering each application we are calling as option now if you want to include additional offerings into this project yes we can do that now we have only financials. Already we have seen how to include multiple offerings into the project during the implementation project. Now already we created implementation project. I want to add additional offerings now. Yes, we can do that. 
to assign additional offerings you can click on add and here you can search for any offering we have seen list of offerings in the last session accordingly you can find those i want to add procurement offering i want to add procurement offering search select click on apply and do done just click on apply so whenever you try to add any offering to the project system creates task list within the procurement we have different applications such as purchasing self service procurement supplier portal procurement contracts and sourcing application different applications we have for all those applications system creates task list in the background you can see procurement is added now click on done and expand procurement inside of the procurement you can see what are the different options system added for each option it created task list okay supplier portal so sourcing application for everything system added task list this is how you can add entire offering if you want to add specific option yes possible say for example at the time of implementation project creation we forgot to select tables i'm just deleting from this financials select and remove so within the financials we included different options say we forgot to select tables option as a part of financials during the implementation project creation now you can add it separately now see we don't have anything as a tables here tables means define invoicing process and the payment process we don't have anything now if you want to add exactly into financials you select financials select financials click on add and now search for tables tables is not a offering it is option if you want to find out any option the search criteria should be task list the search criteria should be task list here you can search for the exact name what we have seen define define invoicing and payment configuration so this is the option this is nothing but payables define invoicing and the payment configuration select click on apply already we selected financials it will be added inside of the financials okay it will be added inside of the financials just wait for a moment it is taking time the reason is it has to generate the task list seems to it's done then click on done now within financials you can see that see it added define invoicing and payment configuration it added so if you want to add separately you can remove here you don't want to include you want to add it separately into project yes that is also possible in that case don't select financials you just keep selection here and select or uh, uh, just deselect everything if you select financial if you add it will be added inside of financials you just deselect you click here it would be selected one time all and again click it would be deselected now we are in the project we did select any offerings now go to add search the same you can see here now select 
click on apply. Now directly we are going to add into our project, not into any offering. Now you can see these two are offerings. This is option, but we add it as a one of the separate folder within the project, not inside of the financials. So how really we required, that's how you can add. You can add single task also, or else task list. Say within the payables, define invoicing and payment configuration, nothing but one of the option, application. Now you want to add defined payables. Okay, say so this is not there in this payables, you want to add it. You want to add inside of this, then select and add. If you don't want to select inside, Okay, deselect everything, click on add, search for defined payables. So defined payables, this is one of the task list. This is one of the task list within the payables. Just click on apply. See, it is added as a separate record and click on done. So within the defined payables, you want to add only one task called as defined payment terms. Say, we didn't add these defined payables or else you add it, it is missing in this somehow. Then you can add it separately. If you want to add separately within this project, deselect. So here you can select, we are going to add single task. You have to select tasks, not task list. Task list only for the folder options. Any folder options which is not offering, you can search and find out. Now we are going to add single task, that is payment terms. Say manage payment terms. So manage payment terms, select, click on apply. Click on done. So this is how you can add specific offering or option or within the option specific task list or particular task within the offering or option or task list or separately also you can add anything. So say for example, we implemented procurement. Now if I'm, I'm going to delete there won't be an issue with the existing setups. Just I'm deleting from this project, but setups will not be deleted from this instance. Setups will remain as this. You can access those setups again by adding procurement here. I'm removing all this because everything we have within the finance, just for our understanding purpose, we created. Remove. So when you create the project, you may create the blank project and you can add these all offerings also, offerings and options. That's how we can do. Now just expand it. Okay. So here you can see the different folders. So those all we are finding under task section. In the task section, you can see offerings or options or task list or task. The next column is help. If you want to understand about anything, okay, if you want to understand about anything, what you are dealing, Oracle is providing help. They are enabling help in every instance. You can just explore on that. If you want to explore on that, when you are working in the system, if you are not aware of something, you can explore. You can click on this help icon. It will open the relevant help and you can read and you can understand. So here you can see that control. If you go to user, you can see hide help icon. If you hide it, you don't see this help icon. That means you cannot explore what purpose that Oracle is providing the related offering or option or task list or task. Okay, if you click on hide, and if you refresh this page, this will not be displayed. Since it is like show help, you see. If I refresh this page, it will be disappear this help icon. 
if i click on show help it will be displayed that's how you can go through that relevant information so i'm expanding i think tables is not part of this okay no worries you can choose any one of fixed assets just click on this help click on help icon so <clears throat> manage fixed assets flex field value sets this is a task name so create and update the definitions of the value sets used in each of the segment in the flex fields if you want to see the complete information you can click on this manage help content it will take you to the help repository okay it will take you to the help repository one second it's not responding let me click on this so this is how it will display and uh, define fixed assets configuration this is what i selected and you can click on the relevant links to understand about what are the different content related information is available so i'm just clicking on this one of the data link so this is how you can navigate to help repository here everything related to fixed assets okay the fixed assets all the concepts what we have you can just click on this all the sections and you can go through this information okay implement assets asset location flex field location flex field descriptive or everything in our classes we'll come across all these okay but here you have a detail information if you want to explore but when you are learning this course you no need to focus on any other content just focus on the classes what we are discussing but still you can see very good help repository by clicking on any one of the task here you can navigate to this repository and you can explore or you can get more details on anything right this is how you have a help repository that's how that help section is useful and next column is go to task the go to task is applicable only for tasks not for offering or option or task list if you have a folder option or folder icon the go to task is not applicable because the task list or task task related option or offering level you cannot perform anything everything you can do with the help of task these are the different different tasks which will allow you to do the setups in the system if you want to do any setups you have to use any one of the task if you want to go to the task related page you should click on this go to task icon that arrow icon then it will take you to that page so i want to go to this page man is fixed assets key flex field i can click on go to task icon it will take us to the relevant page here we can perform the relevant setups we'll see we'll once we start doing the setups you will come to know all these points more detail and the next one is selected scope it is applicable for only limited setups it is applicable for only limited setups now for fixed assets it is not at all applicable i'll take you on task like ledger options you no need to understand what is a ledger options now we are not going to work on it now we will see that later you will understand just to show you how it would be i'm taking to the task here if i go to specify ledger options and for many tasks is all tasks the selection is required so whenever you do these setups there will be dependence there will be dependency this setup you are doing for which other setup that we have to select so their selected scope is applicable we'll see when we start doing the setups we will come to know for now just this is the point you can make a note okay only for limited setups only the selected scope is applicable which is setups will have a dependency on other setups that you can 
first you have to select the value accordingly you can complete the rest of setup and status the status of these tasks what is the status of these tasks you can see here because we updated different statuses so click on multiple one second select so say assign state assign task it's not a task one second Here, this is the task. So this is a related to status. What status we update? What we did is project level, we set the status as in progress. And here again, this task list level, other status is applicable. Okay. Other status is applicable. That is the reason it is showing as a multiple. Okay, multiple it is showing. So to be assigned to different users here you can see multiple assignment the status also for all these tasks multiple status are applied like project level we have set and offering level we have set that is the reason it is showing multiple and assignment point of view also it is showing for every task okay it is assigned to whom mx we assigned and one more user also we assigned that is xyz mp and in between, we have another column called as predecessors. Means it's nothing but prerequisite task. Okay, prerequisite tasks. So if you are going to do certain setups, for that setup, if, if any dependency task, it will show here. Okay, any dependency, it will show here. Wherever dependency is there, say for example, you are going to do this setup. When you are doing the setup, if there is any dependency that it will show here. Here you can see there is one dependency they are showing. Click on that. Define accounting configuration. If you want to do these setups, there is a dependency. Click on the dependency. You can see before you complete these setup, what setup need to be completed, it will display. So that's how this predecessor task column is useful. Okay. Let it take its own time. It is taking time. So assignment two also we have seen a due date. So if you give specific due date, it will display. Since we assign to multiple users and multiple due dates we given, the same is applicable for all these tasks. And assignment permissions and authorized roles. It talks about the permissions and whether the user has a like authority to complete that relevant setup based on our assignment it will show say for example for this user mx or other user you assign few setups few task lists or task or offering or option whether that user has a required permissions or not you can check see now this is the dependency task Define ledger. First, we have to complete the ledger. Then you can perform this define accounting configuration. If you want to do these setups, the first point is you have to create the ledger. Then you can proceed with the remaining task. That's how it is showing the dependence. Now, assignment permissions. Assignment permissions. Now you can just click on assignment permissions. If you want to create this primary ledger, Okay, whether these two users has a permissions as per the current assignment or not, it is showing. So manage primary ledgers, this task is assigned to the two users, MX and XYZ EMP. And here you can see whether those two you assigned, but they are permitted or not. Only MX is permitted, XYZ EMP is not permitted. How? If you want to allow these users to perform this setup, you have to assign certain roles. Very primarily application implementation consultant role. If not application implementation consultant role, few other roles also will support. Which roles will support? You can see here. Authorized roles. 
to complete the setup any user which roles you may use that you can see as a list click on the details you can see these are the different roles which will allow you to do the setups but very key role is application implementation consultant if you assign this role to any user that user will be able to complete this setup not only this any setup there are few other roles. These roles also will allow the user to complete this setup. These roles will have a limited access. So that's how you can get information here. Okay. Permission, you can check to which users you assign really they have a permissions to do the setups or not. Otherwise, roles means which roles will allow those users to do the setup that you can find. And here you can add some notes. Say, for example, you are working on financials or within the financials, you are working on specific offering or option. Let me reopen the project. Say within the financials, you just completed this setup. Fixed assets. I can write some note here. Or else when I do the setups, I may capture all the setups as a screenshots and I can prepare one document exactly what setups I did that document I may attach here just click on notes I can add any note here click on add I can write some note some text I can write here okay here see text and I can write some note all setups completed except location creation so this is how i can add the note say say one close so here you can see there is one note about this setup related to fixed assets or else you can just go there you can see the notes what already added if you want to add some additional notes, so you can just provide some URL link for some data reference or any purposes if required, or else you can upload the file. Okay. The file related to note, you can choose the file. You can attach the file and they'll be able to see that information at option level or directly offering level or any task list level, any level, any level, you can add something. And here you can click on view report and you can see for selected section, how much, what setups are completed, which setups are not completed. That information you can view as a report. Now we didn't do anything much. We didn't do any setups. Even if you run, there is no use. So that's how these different columns will be useful when we are dealing with this project. So any questions here, please. See, now we are in this page. I want to copy this page. You can select this freeze and you can say detach. It will copy the same. See, one more copy. Close. We have this as this. That's how you can freeze and you can detach it. You can just copy that layer of setups okay when i'm doing the setups just i want to compare so i can just do this so that's how we can keep that configuration as it is, and you can go with some other navigation say i want to keep this as it is. i want to do i don't want to disturb this path this navigation this path i don't want to change but i want to search for something then Click on detach. Here you can search for anything. Okay. You can just go through and you can do whatever you want to do. After completing that, you can close this. The previous setup, previous navigation will remain as this. That's how you can use this present detach. So this is what we have to understand at project level. Once question. we start doing the setups, we'll discuss many points related to that. Yes, please. Uh, 
regarding this assignment permission so here uh, the next user is assigning uh, some tasks to other users like erp tree and all so erp tree will also have our application implementation consultant role right so they can also go and change the permissions right maybe at after few days since Any, they also have the yes anyone can change anything if they have access to application they can override the consultant. usernames right yes. to somebody else yes Okay. We need access to application implementation consultant role. And another important point is reality. We don't update the status. We don't do the assignments also in the system. They are given that functionality and we are discussing reality. Everybody knows when you are part of project team, you know, your responsibility and other team members knows their responsibilities. They have to work for which application or which offering. So there will be clear information. We always be in touch as a project team. So that is the reason you no need to update finance zone. So, so consultant is going to work or else in some projects, every application, there will be separate consultant. You no need to update payables is going to be handled by Mr. X receivables by Y fixed assets by G, you no need to update all in the system, but there is a provision. There is an option in the system to update. In the same way, you no need to update the status within the project, whether you initiated doing the setups or not. We can have a meetings and we always keep in touch with the emails, with the team members and everything. It is not like whenever you want to do, you can do. Everything is scheduled. There will be dependency who has to do first, who has to do later, and there will be team collaboration. So that is the reason you no need to go with this updating the status and uh, doing the resource assignment to the project. This is not mandatory. Reality, we don't do also. We create implementation project. We start doing the setups. That is a reality. Any questions here, please? So how long this uh, configuration setups will continue in the project uh, uh, and any development developer is needed here only functional con consultant will take care of this only functional consultant can handle all these setups we may need developers and all if there is some customization say take example of payables say oracle is providing say 30 reports for payables but as per client requirement, they need five more reports. They need five reports. The reports, what they need, those are not in the list of 30 reports. Now the new, new report need to be developed. We need developer or call as a technical consultant. So we take the requirement from the client. What report you need, what data need to be displayed in that report. That information as a functional consultant, we take from the client that we pass to technical consultant by following that inputs, technical consultant can develop the report. Or else, take an example of client is using Oracle Fusion. And they are using some third party applications for payrolls to run the company payrolls. They are using separate application. Take example. The ADP software they are using for payroll to run the employee payrolls, they are using ADP software. So that application, they want to integrate, they want to connect with the Fusion application because we have to collect the data into GL application to prepare the reports. So they want to connect. They want to connect that ADP application with Oracle Fusion application that we call as integration. Connecting one application with another application, we call as integration. If you are going to use Oracle applications, you no need to connect. Oracle already connected means Oracle already integrated and they are accordingly they are providing those applications. But if you are going to use any other than Oracle related applications, those we call as third party applications. Other than Oracle, the non-Oracle applications we call as third-party applications. If you want to connect any third-party application with a Fusion application, we need developer or say technical consultant. They connect other applications with Oracle applications so that 
the data we can receive from other applications to our fusion applications. These are the cases where we need developer or say technical consultant. Their scope is very, very limited. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah. So you mean to say if I do not have any integrations, any reporting requirements, I can complete the entire project with configuration and yes, push it to project. Exactly, exactly. We can execute entire project. In before fusion, whatever we have as EBS, e-business suite, there at least for one specific task, we need technical consultants that we call as the data conversions. But in the fusion, that also they converted into functional task. We can do that. Now, without technical consultant, without single technical consultant, we can complete the entire implementation. That is a scope in the fusion. If any custom reports, any integrations, then we need technical consultant. Otherwise, no technical consultant is required. Reality in the market also, there is a very, very less scope for technical consultants. There is a good scope for functional because everything for or any other company is also trying to make things simple. They're trying to convert things into functional side. Right. And when do the QA comes? Uh, QA also doesn't play a major role here uh, in testing and all. Yes, we do testing and all. As a functional consultant, we do it. That is one of the activity. Say so we do all the setups and we test. So we do, then we, we do not use it to the business to test. We don't, we don't have a separate QA team to test. No, 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 no. See, you need separate teams and all if you are developing some new applications and if you are implementing at a time for 100 countries or 50 countries, you may form a set of people as a team. Otherwise, in normal implementation, that is one of the simple activity which we do along with the many activities. Okay. And also, do we have any quality assurance team here? Yeah, the same we are talking, QA. Okay. Quality assurance, testing and all. So there won't be such kind of teams. That's what I'm mentioning. If you are doing at a time for maybe 50 countries, 100 countries for the same client, you can set up small teams to take care of different, different uh, activities for governance, QA, this and that you can set. In, okay. in general, normal implementations, okay, practically you see in the most of the implementations, there won't be any separate teams. So we will act as a different uh, team members and we do as a consultant. See, we do that. We take the requirement. There won't be any separate team to take the requirement from the client. We set up the system. We test it. We show to the client and we'll ask them to test and we'll take the approvals and we do the setups in the production or else we move the setups to production. We will help the business to understand how to use this system. Then they'll start. We will load the data, their suppliers, customers, assets, all we will load. One system will go live, they'll start using. If they have some issues in terms of using the system, we will help them. That's it. But um, uh, you can use the QA system where you can develop the automation kind of thing. For example. No, no, yeah, yeah, see, 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 that if required, that's what I mentioned. Exactly. That's what exactly. I mentioned. Yeah, see, I'm sharing that information. Yeah, no, no, yeah, got it, got it. That's what, if you are doing the implementation for many countries, again, that implementation is complex where you are doing some sort of customizations and all, then you have to go with that uh, manual testing or automation, many things. Otherwise, manually we test, which is a simple task. If we call... Why it is very challenging is uh, the automation engineers, they won't get this kind of knowledge, right? The, so the functional consultant only has to give the input to develop the scripts, even though. So yeah, that anyway, that's we that's do the test scripts always we create. Say, if, if you are implementing tables, we have to create the test script saying that how to create invoice, what is the navigation, where you have to click, what data you have to enter, and what tab you have to select. Then say, save and submit. This is how everything we have to provide in the test script. 
okay that script only you can give to that uh, any teams and accordingly they may build that uh, automation so our job will remain same if anyone else is going to be this project that is accordingly as per requirement we will be working as a functional consultant our responsibilities remain same so we should know about the standard application what oracle is providing accordingly we can set up and we can help them to use on top of it if any automation of testing or anything yes we will provide that test scripts what generally we prepare accordingly they just write the automation scripts and they can automate the process of testing the system and if any new things need to be created in the system and we will help the technical people what client is expecting we are not going to do we are not going to do automation we are not going to do any customization our role is limited we will be helping if they need some information from specific application or activity side nothing else we are going to do apart from that just we'll give some data what they need that's what they don't have a right direct entry into the queue team direct entry into the in our system <laughs> yes they do from outside they'll run the scripts and all but here we are focusing what is our role okay so our role will remain same doesn't matter there could be other teams and all our role is as a functional yeah. consultant uh, if the business or the product is requiring some kind of custom is customizations how they are communicating with them they are communicating communicating with respect to any requirements template or or is it so ad hoc we set up meeting say in payables department to say payables application we implemented they are coming up with some new requirements which are not possible within the payables with the standard functionality then we set up call with the business they explain so this is what we are expecting this is a new page we need or this is a new report we need then we ask them okay we ask them we give simple template saying that you just write what exactly the purpose of the report or purpose of that object what you need and what data need to be captured that information will take and that will pass to the technical team they develop what business required and they will test and they'll give to us we will verify whether it is working as expected uh, with expected results once it is working fine we will just uh, present to the business saying that this is what you asked as a so and so report or so and so development our technical team developed this is what you can just go through and review and do come back to us and they'll see if any changes required they will inform to us and we have to pass to technical team once that is get it done so again we have to inform to the uh, client saying that yes the required modifications are done now you can again you can go verify if it is fine you can give the approval so that we can freeze it close it that's how we just play the kind of intermediate role in between like uh, technical and business in case of any customizations anything we are going to perform just will be taking and will be taking the data or information from the business and will be passing to the technical if any updates from technical will pass to client that is the role we will play wherever it is applicable means mostly in customizations what we do as a new those we call as customization so these all are explained very detail level in the real time related classes okay so there you can get to know the complete uh, step by step process any other questions here please no questions now so we are ready with the implementation project so first step user creation second step we have to get ready with implementation project as a part of implementation project what are the points we have to understand already we discussed now third step is we have to set up system to allow us to perform the transactions if you want to record the transaction the system the very basic information is in every transaction you have to capture the date when 
you did some activity or when you are doing the activity that we have to capture in the system and what exact activity you are doing nothing but description what exact activity you are doing nothing but description and the amount the transaction amount the deal amount whatever you are doing so these details are very very essential in every transaction to make more sense for the transaction whatever the transaction it may be purchasing or selling something or it may be your internal activity whatever related to your business whatever the activities you do related to your business those we have to capture with a date description and relevant amount that means we have to keep all these ready in the system so that you will be able to create the transaction for a date we have to create calendar in the system we have to create calendar in the system if you want to capture the date in the system you have to create the calendar so when you create the calendar in the instance what are the points need to be considered what points need to be considered first we have to consider we are doing implementation for which country client why we have to look at the country the calendar what we create that always we create by following the country finance year as per the country finance year we create calendar that is the reason if you are doing the implementation for indian client what is the finance year in india april to march now you have to create the calendar in the system april to march if you are implementing fusion applications for us client what is the finance year in us jan to december now you have to create the calendar from jan to december so that's how the country finance year is very important okay so we have to consider financial year and as a part of calendar we use period as a monthly they can generate the reports daily based monthly quarterly hourly yearly however however they required they can but as a basic period we use monthly so when you create the calendar so it let it start from any month will we can have a 12 periods but as per system we can create more than 12 so you are creating the account calendar for us client we have to follow the us finance year that is jan to december so how many periods you can have 12 periods 12 months but as per system we have a flexibility to have more than 12 periods that means we can have additional periods those additional periods what we create in the calendar those we call as adjustment periods so when you create calendar the default period type is monthly so you can have a 12 periods the calendar so you can have more than 12 periods within the calendar those we call as adjustment periods those we call as adjustment period adjustment periods are additional periods within the calendar so these 12 are mandatory because reality the business is doing in those the business the client is doing the business operations across those 12 periods so those 12 periods are mandatory within the calendar what about these additional periods which we are calling as adjustment these are not mandatory these are optional so ideally these adjustment periods can be used end of the year so you are closing books end of the year you are closing the books there are some provisions there are some adjustments which you are not able to finalize you want to keep them as suspense or in some other accounts you want to record those separately yes when you are closing the books maybe end of the year means december 
those adjustments you can record within the December month. Your finance clear is drawn to December. Within the December month, you can post those adjustments. You can record those adjustments in the last period of the finance clear. If you don't want to record certain adjustments within the last period of the finance year, you can have a separate period and that period you can call as adjustment period. Mostly, we recommend to the business to have at least one adjustment period within the calendar. Few clients doesn't accept this recommendation. They say we don't need any adjustments for separate period. We do adjustments that we record in the actual periods and we categorize those transactions. Anyway, those are adjustments after a certain time frame, we will reverse it and we will be taking into the based on the realization, we will be take, converting into actual transactions or updating in the system. That's what they do. Some clients, even if you recommend, as a consultant, we have to recommend better you can have one additional adjustment period. You may not require this adjustment period now. In future, if it is required, you can use it. If you don't take decision now to have additional periods within the calendar, if you come across the requirement in the future, say, let's have one additional period in the calendar, that doesn't work. When you are creating the calendar, you have to take the decision. Once you create accounting calendar, you have to go with the same accounting calendar. If you create accounting calendar with the 12 periods, you have to just go with the 12 periods only. There is no scope to add additional periods once you create calendar. That is the reason. So when we are creating, we have to talk to the business and we have to tell them you just we recommend to have at least one additional period if required you can use in the future if you don't require no issues that will be lying in the calendar as a one of the additional period it can be useful in the future with that note we have to explain to the client if they accept yes you create an additional period within the calendar as adjustment period if they don't accept that is up to them as per their acceptance we have to do the setups so you can create calendar in the system with the 12 periods. And calendar is one time setup. You create calendar. We are not going to create the calendar, separate calendars for each and every year. We create one calendar. All the year related periods we have to add in the same calendar. Every year we are not going to create the calendar. One calendar we create. Within that you can add all the years and for each year the periods you can add, everything would be part of single calendar. For one country, one calendar. Sometimes for multiple countries, the finance clear may be same. Then you can use same calendar for multiple countries also. For multiple countries also, you can use it. Say you are doing the implementation for US and UAE. UAE and US finance clear is done to December. Now you can create single calendar, the same calendar you can use for US and UAE country. So that's how single calendar can be used for multiple countries. If each country has a separate finance year, accordingly you have to define the calendar in the system. So these are the points we have to understand. We'll go and create accounting calendar Let's see how to create. If you have any questions, we will discuss. Let's see how to create. Then we will discuss if you have any questions. In the same what we discussed and the same what we are going to see. Okay, let's create and we will discuss if you have any questions. Go to instance. And here you have a task search field. So to Create something, you no need to take the navigation like this. Say if you want to do some setup related to fixed assets, you no need to go to fixed assets folder. You no need to expand. No need to click on go to task icon. Okay. You no need to go with the multiple, the streams of navigations and all. So directly you can search for anything here. What you want to do? You want to create the calendar. Here you can search for calendar. The calendar what we create, we call as accounting calendar. Simply you can say calendar. 
as per system, they are giving the name as accounting calendar. They are giving the name as accounting calendar. Let's search for accounting calendar. You don't need to type the full name. So just I'm giving accounting C calendar search. So drag little right. Here you can see manage accounting calendars. Since I type C, it is just finding the tasks which are matching with the same criteria. Now I'll just extend it. It will fetch the task with the same match. So now the task is manage accounting calendars. If you want to create accounting calendars, directly you can search and you can create or else you can follow this path. So first you have to go to financials folder that we have to expand inside of financials. You can find this path, this task or task list or else let's see that. Let me duplicate this tab. You can open the same instance under multiple tabs. Now let me go to the same project. Click on overview. Now, so one option is you can search. Second option is you can follow this path. If you want to follow the path, first you have to expand financials. Expand financials. Now, define common applications configuration for financials. Here, you have to go to define common application configuration for financials. Then what is our next step? Define enterprise structures for financials. Define enterprise structures for financials. Expand it. Next. Define financial reporting structures. Define financial reporting structures. Now you can see define calendars. Here is the defined calendars, expand it. Within the defined calendars, you can find this task. Manage accounting calendars. So multiple clicks, multiple streams. So we don't follow the manual navigation for reality. Always any setup you want to perform directly, you can search and you can find. When we go through these classes, you will come to know all. You don't need to think how we can find the task name, how we can know the task name. So once we go through these classes, we'll come to know each and every setup so that you can search and you can perform the setups. So this is how you can search for any task. After finding the task, click on the same task. Just click on the same task. If you want to check what is the path you have to follow to come to this task. Here you can click on arrow mark. You can see as a show hierarchy. It will show what is the actual path to come to this task. This is how the path is available. But anyway, we are not going to follow that path. Directly you can search and find. Just you want to understand where it is standing. Okay. It is the task manage accounting calendars is inside of defined calendar task list that is part of defined financial reporting structures that is part of enterprise structure for financials ultimately this is there as a part of this task list and that task list we have in this financials just for information purpose you may check now this is the task we have to perform this is the task we have to perform Click on go to task icon. Just click on go to task icon. So this is the instance we are using for practice. That is the reason you can see many calendars here. 
reality, you don't find any calendars in this page. If you navigate to this page as a part of real implementation, you will find the space blank, empty data, no sample data. So, but anyway, you may find the sample data in this instance, but we are not going to depend on that. Everything we are going to create from the scratch. We are not going to use any sample data in the real time implementation. So what approach we follow, the same we are going to follow. Now, so to create the accounting calendar as per the country, just click on and another important point, there is no point of as per client requirement. Always we create calendar as per country only. If client says they need additional period adjustment period on top of the accounting calendar, you can add it or else you create as this. That's it. There is no point of client requirement when you create accounting calendar. It is country requirement. So click on create. Here you can give the calendar name. So this field allows very limited characters. That is the reason always you can give the short name. Say Amex ACC CAL. More than this, it is not allowing. See, that's all. But the limited character is allowing. So I'm taking the name as Amex Accounting ACC CAL, Accounting Calendar. If you want to write the description, you can write it. Amex accounting calendar for US. And what is the financial year for US? Jan to December. So the start date you have to provide. Jan, Jan 1st. That you have to select here. Jan 2023. Select and period frequency. The period frequency is monthly. By default, monthly we use. If you want to use different S yes, or at least providing those options, but we use monthly in every implementation. Period frequency is monthly. Now, period name format. So for each period, system will follow this format. It will create the periods like John iPhone 23, Feb iPhone 23. This is how it will create because this is the default format. This is a very standard format we use. If you want to change, you can change it. Say you want to have this format. This is how you want to see the period names in the system when you create the transaction. Okay. How you want to see accordingly, you can select. So this is how you can choose the period naming format or a naming convention. So done. So how we required, we can choose it. You can accept default. Ideally, that is the best and right format to use. Now format is month in three digits, year in two digits, two characters. And these two need to be separated with iPhone. That is the reason it is creating the period name as John iPhone Feb. If you want to select slash in between, you can set. If you want to set none, you can keep it. But ideally, you can use this iPhone only. So to have a the right format for the periods. And here is the adjustment period frequency option. By default, Oracle is giving option as one set year in one adjustment period at the end of the year. That's what we set up for most of the clients. If you try to set, you don't need any adjustment periods, you see. I'm selecting adjustment period frequencies none. I'm telling to the system we don't need. Then there is a warning message from system. It is recommended that you define at least one adjustment period at the end of the year to accommodate potential adjustment entries. Do you want to continue? So recommendation from system also, but if you don't want to listen to system, you can proceed and you can create accounting calendar without adjustment period. The reality when you do the implementation, we are used mostly one set year. 
Apart from that, Oracle is giving the flexibility. You can take your own decision. Accordingly, you can create adjustment periods. You see here, once at beginning of year and once at end of the year. Another option is once mid and once at end. Once mid-year, two at end of the year, twice at year end, and once at year end, twice at year end, or quarterly. If you select quarterly, every three periods, it will add one adjustment period. It means four quarters, four adjustment periods. Other option is other. Here you can give how many you need. You need three. It will add three in the end of the year. Or else you can say none. It's not recommended. Okay, always the recommendation is have one set year end. And budgetary control only, the calendar what we are creating, this is for the purpose of to record the transactions. If you want to have a separate calendar for budgeting purpose, you can create that calendar from this page. When you create the calendar for budget, you have to enable the checkbox and this complete information will be changed. That we will see when we deal with the budget concept. Now we no need to worry about that option. So let's focus on how to create accounting calendar. How we are creating accounting calendar? We have to provide the name. Description is optional. For which country you are creating accounting calendar, accordingly you can provide the start date. If you are implementing for Indian client, so you have to give the start date as a 1st April 2020. And period frequency by default monthly, how the, the period name should appear by following the format. These all you can accept what system is taking. Adjustment period frequency monthly. This is how we can input the data. Once you click on next, automatically system will create periods for one year. By default, it will create periods for one year. For next years, you have to just click on relevant tab and you have to generate those periods. We'll see that also. I'm just clicking on next. It will create the accounting calendar for 2023. See, Jan to December, it create auto created. And there is one more period called as 13th period. That system is marking as adjustment. See, these all periods are real periods. These are not adjustment periods. These all are real. So that is the reason it is not marking as adjustment period. Only one period is adjustment. So system is marking as adjustment. If it is not marking as adjustment, system point of view, there will be conflict. You see, adjustment period name system took as a 13th period. It is copying the month as December. And the 13th period quarter it is taking forth. The date range, you see. December 31st to December 31st. One day it is taking. But already the date is there in the December period. If it is not enabled as a adjustment period, system won't allow us to create this adjustment period because period date should not be overlap. So here already we have 31st. How come you can have same 31st in the other period? That's how system won't allow. That is the reason. They are giving the message to the system by enabling this as adjustment period so that system will accept to reuse the same day or dates if it is adjustment period. You can change this date range for adjustment period. You want to keep adjustment period range maybe for one week. Yes, you can keep it. You can update how you require. Since it's adjustment period, you can reuse the already used dates which are in the December part. Okay. And if you look at this, how it created, it took the name as a whatever we selected as a format. And this period is belongs to which year. And that period is first period and belongs to first quarter. And the period date range is first John to 31st John. And this is not adjustment period. So these three periods are belongs to quarter one. If you are going to generate the reports, the report preparation time automatically system will display Q1, quarter one. The quarter one, these three periods are grouped and quarter two, Q2. That's how system takes care of that information. You no need to set up, you no need to create the calendar quarterly since you are going to generate the reports. You create monthly, you will be able to generate the reports 
whether you need reports period wise, quarter wise, how exactly an entire year wise, or half year, how you require all the dimensions are possible when you create the reports. So this is our system created. Now what we have to do is just we have to save this accounting calendar. After providing inputs, you have to click on next. Once you click on next, it creates accounting calendar for only one year. If you want to add the periods for next year, you have to save it. Once you save it, here it is adding add year tab. If you click on add year, it will add the periods for next year. As of now, we have periods only for 2023. If you want to add, just click on add year, it will add the periods for 2024. Now we have two years. Reality, when you create this implementation, when you do the implementation, the calendar what we create, we create for two to three years and we leave it. In future, whenever we need additional periods for future years, then you can come back to this page and you can just hit that add year tab. It will auto generate periods for next year. Okay, here now we have periods for 2023 and 2024. So here it is showing as a first period as a 2025. Here just it is showing 25. That means if you click on add year, from which period again it is going to create one more year periods that it is showing here. 20, 23, 24 we created. Now if I click on add year, the first period it will create as a John 25 and last period as a the December 25 or you have adjustment period accordingly it will create. For every year it will add the adjustment period since that is a part of our accounting calendar. So this is what you have to understand about accounting calendar and this is how you can create in the system. For each country we create one accounting calendar. Same accounting calendar can be used for multiple countries if multiple countries financial years are same. This is what we have to understand about accounting calendar. Any questions from anyone, please? You cannot change the accounting calendars once we start recording the transactions in the system. It's a one-time decision. Okay, we cannot change. We cannot change anything within the accounting calendar. How you create, you have to use. Only the change you can do is adding the new year periods. That's it. You can keep adding the years. Means within the years, system will add the periods. That's what we do as a kind of maintenance activity. So we'll keep adding the years whenever required. So more than that, we don't touch anything or accounting calendar. Say you created accounting calendar for your client without any adjustment period. They started using the system. After five years, they came up with a requirement as better we can, they can have an adjustment period. They'll come back to you saying that we need one adjustment period in the accounting calendar. Not possible. So that is the reason at the time of implementation itself, we have to explain to the client the importance of account adjustment period. They may say yes, we don't need any adjustment period now. We can add we can enter adjustments in the last period of the financial year. That may be their statement, but we have to tell them in future, if required, it would be useful. There is no harm if you have one additional adjustment period in your calendar. That's what we have to recommend as a consultant. That is a consultant job. We have to suggest to have an adjustment period. If they don't listen to us, we have to listen to them. The bottom line. So any questions on accounting calendar creation, please? Uh, yes, sir. So actually accounting, if the accounting cycle is April to um, uh, April to March, the same way we need to create a calendar. That's it. That's it. Let's create the same process. There is no difference. Click on create. So just X, Y, Z. So you are implementing for Indian client. Select April 1st. Rest all remain as is. Nothing. Just click on next. 
created. Now see here, period is 23. Yes. But year is 24. Why? This financial year will end in which year? 24. 24. That is reporting year. In case of Jan to December, ending also in 23 only, right? Right. So reporting year and actual periods all are belongs to same year. But here, the periods are belongs to 23 up to December. 23 from Jan 24, but it is ending with March 24. 24 we call as a reporting year. Accordingly, it will display. That's it. Rest everything as this. Yep. Here you can oh. find out what are the calendar you created. This is the calendar we created. So once we create calendar we don't do any changes we don't do any changes to that if you want to change the period format you can change the format that's it so that's all about accounting calendar what so based on what factor the start date we have to define here the period whether it was 19 from 19, 19 when that finance year is starting that's it there is no other calculation so in india April to March. No, that not that one. I'm asking the period. So from you have defined for so January twenty three, right? From January twenty three onwards. But in real time, so let's say we are implementing uh, uh, for a new client from, from this year onwards. But the target can be from nineteen ninety or two thousand, right? No, 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 no. They don't load that much historical data. What they do is. If they have historical data, the summary, they load it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we don't... Also, get the best practice, uh, like, like, eight years of the data or how, like... No, no, no. See, they don't do the total... No, no, yeah, yeah, I'm coming to that point. So, what they do is, they provide the data... Application, depends on application. If you take example of payables... We take only the invoices which need to be paid to the suppliers. Only unpaid invoices only be loaded to payable system. Okay. We don't take from last to 10, uh, 10 years how many invoices they created. We are not going to load. In the same way, if you take GL, we load the TB, trial balance. And you'll come to know all those we are going to see in our classes. If you take receivables, how many outstanding transactions we have? For how many transactions we have to get the payment from the customer that we load? If they want to load paid invoices also, yes, we have other options. With the help of technical team we can do. For that, we have some APIs. So that's all. They don't move the complete detailed historical data. Okay. They move the summary of the balances into this, the other data they maintain in the, the previous system. That is the reality of how we do. If some client says like, I want to just load the last two years, three years data also. Then you create accounting calendar accordingly and you just uh, help them to get the data into system by following the templates, what we are going to discuss in our classes. So for safer side, there is no harm in creating the account, uh, setting the accounting calendar from, uh, let's say, five years earlier, right? 20, 20 yeah, you can create after. it. You can create it. The reality, what we do is, we create transactions in the respective period and we close the period and we'll move to the next period. That is a practice we follow. As a part of implementation, if you have a plan of loading historical data for multiple past years, Yes, accordingly, when you sit with the client in the discussions, this all will come out. What is their plan? And accordingly, we can recommend something and the final, what are the decisions they are taking? Accordingly, you can create. But what is the best practice for creating the calendar? Just or the current from current financial year onwards or from we, earlier one? We create ideally like from the current year only some implementations will create one year two years 
and we just get the data. In many projects, we create from the current year and uh, within the current year, the historical. By this time, what is the opening balances and all they have that we load into the system. From there, they'll kickstart using the system. Everything will be tracked in the system. Okay, that is the best practice everybody follows. Any other questions here, please? I love you. Yeah. Uh, in the calendar year is uh, January to December is the uh, total of the world. Uh, is the another is the India is the April to March. No, 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 no. Total uh, world, no. Like many countries has a different uh, financial years. June to July. Okay. Oh. November to uh, October. There are different financial years. Whatever they are using in the country, in their country, accordingly, we have to create accounting calendar. That's all. Okay. Uh, is the India is calendar is April to March, but uh, January, February, March is special, uh, um, special year calendars or special periods? Not special periods. Mm -hmm. Those are spanning across other year. That's it. But okay. financial year is same, right? Okay. Okay. April to March is finance year. That is one finance year. That is not two finance year. But this is integrated with the two years. 23 and 24, right? In 23 up to December, from 24 up to March. Okay. It is integrated across these two years. But finance year is only one. Okay. India finance is starting in the April and ending in the March. April to March is one finance year. It may span across these two years. Doesn't matter. Finance year is only one. Okay, thank you. That we have to create in the system as this. Any questions from anyone, please? Fine. Seems to no questions. That's all for today. What we will do in the tomorrow session is so we will see the amount part, what are the, what are the points we have to understand related to amount and the very key important concept is description. That will play a very vital role in every implementation. So that, that means a lot. We will discuss in the tomorrow session. First, we'll talk about how to deal with the amounts or currencies. Then we'll focus on how to capture the description of the transaction, which is really important for reporting purpose for any company. So if Lakshmi. you have any questions, please stay back. We'll discuss. If no questions, we'll connect tomorrow, same time. Thank you all. Have a great day.